Welcome everybody to our communion service here at St. Guthlac's Church in Fishtoft, part of our coastal cluster of churches on the eastern side of Boston in Lincolnshire. If you'd like to join in with spiritual communion later in the service, then the words will be on the screen and join in at the appropriate moment. All the words for the service and the hymns will be on screen uh, as you need them. And so we begin with the first of our hymns, All My Hope on God is Founded. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We come to our time of penitence, and so let's be quiet for a moment and recall those things that we wish to confess to God today. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. 
Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to our special prayer for today, the second Sunday in Lent, so the collect for today. Let's pray silently for a moment. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings and by following in his way, come to share in his glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so Libby is going to read our first Bible reading for us today. Thank you, Libby. The lesson is taken from Philippians chapter 3, starting at verse 17. Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. For, as I have often told you before, and now say again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a saviour from there, the Lord Jesus Christ who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Libby. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 13, beginning to read at verse 31. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here. Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow and the next day I must be on my way, because it's impossible for a prophet to be killed away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me again until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel reading we've just heard sees Jesus travelling around towns and villages and teaching and healing people. He's ultimately aiming for Jerusalem, which St Luke makes clear and which we will see later. While he's doing this, he's approached by some Pharisees, Jewish men who were very keen to follow God's laws and ways, trying to see how the Bible, especially the first five books, could be understood to help make sense of life. They had a range of opinions amongst themselves and spent a lot of time debating these issues and studying. When they meet with Jesus, they often disagree in their opinions, although not always. Sometimes the Pharisees and Jesus agree, sometimes they disagree. So they're obviously interested in what Jesus has to say because several times Jesus is invited to dinner by a Pharisee, probably for some table talk. Some of them are quite anti-Jesus and grumble about the behaviour of Jesus' disciples. Some of them are pro-Jesus. We even hear in the Acts of the Apostles of Pharisees who joined the young church at Jerusalem. 
Pharisees, by the way, are not the same as the scribes and the Sadducees. They are different groups within the Judaism of Jesus' day. With their varied responses and opinions of Jesus, it's not clear here whether the Pharisees who come to warn Jesus are genuinely trying to help him or just interfering. But an important lesson for us is to notice that being a religious person, even one genuinely trying to follow God's ways, does not mean that we are correct in all our opinions or interpretations, or that people with different opinions to ours are wrong. So they present a lesson for us in humility. As followers of Christ, they are a good example to us. Because some of them were pretty dismissive of Christ, we're reminded that it is easy, even with the best of intentions, to get in the way of what God is doing. Often, the Pharisees show us what is good in being open-minded. They discussed uh, things a lot. They came up with various opinions on how to follow God's ways and frequently agreed to disagree. And we can still read some of these discussions in early Jewish writings. Sometimes the opinions are mentioned. Sometimes discussing two different opinions presents itself a new opinion. Christians have also often agreed to disagree on matters that are not of great importance. Matters that are not perhaps forbidden or commanded by the Bible, for example, or have been pronounced on by the church. Just as the Pharisees disagreed with Jesus' disciples snacking on wheat kernels in Luke chapter 6, this way may be summed up by a, a quote that goes like this. In essentials, unity. In non-essentials, liberty, and in all things, charity. We might remind ourselves of our own motto here at St. Guthlax, picking up on Jesus' comments that the most important things are to love God, love people, and follow Jesus. Where does the action in today's Gospel reading happen? Well, it's in an area called Perea, an area ruled over by Herod Antipas, along with Galilee between the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea on the opposite side to Jerusalem. Jesus' response to these Pharisees is quite sharp, although they have just warned him, to be fair, that his life is in danger. He calls Herod a fox, perhaps because of his low cunning or lack of honour, perhaps because he's deceptive or for his predatory behaviour. We certainly know that he's a killer. John the Baptist was already dead by his order. And Herod wants to stop Jesus as well. Jesus, though, doesn't actually appear scared. He's got a few more days left in this area, and then he's going to move on to Jerusalem. And he knows this is where the real threat lies, and where he will in fact die, not in some jail in the countryside. He knows that the showdown will take place in Jerusalem, the Jewish capital. He also knows that the timing is wrong, it's got to happen at Passover, that great Jewish festival, when Jesus and his people remember being saved from death. Jesus is going to save us all from the power of death by his death and resurrection. And so it has to happen at Passover as well, otherwise the symbolism is entirely lost. In a way, you can almost hear Jesus laughing and saying on the third day, I'm going to be in Jerusalem, and that's not your territory. It was, in fact, uh, uh, Herod Antipas's brother Archelaus's territory. Both of those were sons of Herod the Great. He was the chap who was around when Jesus was born about 30 years earlier. Jesus speaks then with great irony about Jerusalem, a city that's been chosen by God for his very presence to dwell in, but a city that had killed God's messengers. We know that from the Bible, for example, in 2 Chronicles 24, uh, where the prophet Zechariah is stoned to death, and it's mentioned also uh, that people are killed who are sent to Jerusalem in Jeremiah chapter 2. Jesus knows the dangerous territory he is entering. Not dangerous because that fox Herod Antipas is after him, but much, much more important than that. And so to contrast with the predatory fox, Jesus chooses the fox's favourite meal, chicken. <laughs> A bit tongue-in-cheek, I suspect. The mother hen, he says, looks after her brood, 
God wants to look after us in this very touching way. It's an idea that's mentioned several times in the Psalms. Perhaps Jesus is reminding us of the wings of the cherubim, the angels on the Ark of the Covenant. That's where God's presence was. And so Jesus uses an image that the people of his time can understand from their history, but he also picks up on an everyday image, the idea of a hen. Of course, the Ark of the Covenant had disappeared, but the presence of God returns under Jesus' wings, as it were. People think that at great cost, hens may try to keep their chicks safe, even at the cost of their own life. They've been known to try and shelter their chicks when there's a fire and they themselves have perished. That rather sounds something like Jesus, keeping us safe, though he dies. And so Jesus gives us a big clue about who he is. He is the long-awaited Messiah. He is the son of David. He is the one who can and will save us. We know all of this because Jesus quotes an important psalm, Psalm 118, verse 26, sometimes called a royal psalm. And it's a psalm used in the Passover feast itself, a psalm that was sung to commemorate God saving his people from death. Jesus and his disciples quite possibly sang this psalm themselves as they went out to the Mount of Olives after the Last Supper. Jesus then comes to save his people from the power of death by dying himself and overcoming death by rising again on the third day. He mentions, of course, the third day is when things will be completed earlier in our reading. And so it's no wonder people are crying out, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They cry, of course, these same words a few weeks later on what we call Palm Sunday. They use these same words with no irony. They acclaim Jesus the King, the Messiah, the Son of David, their Saviour. They want help in their troubles. And this troubled area, troubled then, still troubled, should make us pray for peace. The Psalms remind us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But of course, these days we are very concerned to pray for the peace of the whole world and especially Ukraine. Today, almost 2,000 years after the death and resurrection of the Messiah, we gather in a broken world where our sense of security has been shattered by war once again, by the pandemic and by violence and terrorism that we continually see around the world, and where human hearts are still longing for life and liberty. And so surely we would join the cry, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Well, actually, we do join in that cry in every communion service in the Eucharistic prayer. It's called the Benedictus from the first word in Latin. And so those words from Psalm 118 were written by the psalmist, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu. The church sings Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini. And of course, we say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us think of what this meant to Jesus, to the people of Jerusalem, and means to us today. Let us take these words anew and make them our own. In a world in turmoil once again, let us recognise and embrace the Prince of Peace. These words remain a thrilling cry in the midst of a broken world. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. And now we declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, 
and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now Sally is going to lead our prayers for us. Thank you, Sally. In the stillness and quiet, Lord, we seek you. We know that where two or three are gathered, you also will be. We pray as we sit within your gaze, our words and thoughts will rest in you. Holy God, as you have called us to be holy, shield us from all that is evil and destructive, protecting us in body and soul. Extend our vision of our purpose and journey, that we may know we are your people and citizens of your kingdom. Through Christ our Lord, one God, world without end. Amen. Lord, we put our hope in you, as you are our protector and shield. Mighty God, you are a very present help in all our troubles. We put our trust in you. Guide us as your church, that it may lead others to encounter your love and glory. We pray for wanderers and the lost, those tossed about within the world's deceivers or fakes. We thank God for the Samaritans and counsellors, for those in marriage guidance, giving help too for those who may be persecuted for their faith all over the world. Lord, we put our hope in you, for you are our protector and shield. God of hope, we remember before you all refugees, those driven out of their homes, towns and cities by unspeakable violence and tyranny. We desperately pray for the people of the Ukraine and the people of Russia too, for both their countries, governments and leaders, where those latest incidents have brought terror, total disbelief and such inhuman actions. We pray that your everlasting arms may protect, shield and comfort the children, the communities and everyone caught up with no way out, no safe passage, and death and murder moments away. For those who choose war, inflicting the fear and atrocities, we pray they will lay down their arms and cease their actions, that they will choose life for all people, meaning life in all its fullness. Hold them to you as they pray. Lord, we put our hope in you. You are our protector and our shield. For the leaders of all countries, and especially Ukraine and Russia, now on the world stage, may they strive for justice and peace, inspired by the wisdom and courage of Christ. God, our Father, Help us to do our part in all this, to pray unceasing, to send to the agencies what we possibly can in money or goods. For those driving the lorries or the medical equipment, we pray for your protection and safe passage in their unselfish actions of love for their brothers and sisters of the human race. Lord, we put our hope in you and you are our protector and shield. 
healing God. At these times, we also think of and pray for those we know who are finding times hard or the outlook bleak for all who are ill or suffering great pain, those finding out that their lives are coming to an end here on earth. May your presence with them bring acceptance and a gentle peace of knowing they will be changed from their earthly bodies to become like your glorious body and share in your glory revealed in heaven. As a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, you, Lord God, will gather all life into your heavenly kingdom. Merciful God, may we, as much as is possible, live in peace. Share peace and pray for peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Sally. And so as we think of the Prince of Peace coming to us, we share the peace of Christ with one another. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God of wisdom, may the light of your eternal word, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, lead us in holiness and guide us to glory. We ask this in his name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who is sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh, as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because you give us in the spirit of discipline that we may triumph over evil and grow in grace. As we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and heart renewed. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, 
eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. <clears throat> and so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Behold God's love for you. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Behold, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. If you would like to join us for spiritual communion, then please follow the words on the screen at this point. Thank you. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I humbly pray that you may enter spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live and die in your love. Amen.
what has passed our lips as food, O Lord, may we possess in purity of heart, that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. Amen. Almighty God, you see that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we come to our final hymn for this service, Lord of all hopefulness. pleased that you are able to join us today. We hope that you'll be able to join us again in two weeks' time. Thank you. A blessing. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.